This is Convex OS. It's a project I wanted to build after being blown away by a recent homepage update from PostHog. I've always loved these kind of operating system in a browser kind of sites and wanted to have a go myself. So as a dirty Windows user, I knew it was gonna to have to go for a classic Windows XP aesthetic. So you can do a bunch of the things that you might expect with an operating system. You can upload files, double click them to open them in preview windows, drag files into windows to change what you're looking at. It's got a start menu with a few options, um, even Internet Explorer because sure, why not? Oh, and because you know this is, well, you know, a Convex channel, everything is synced to the Convex backend. So if I open another tab here, and you see as I move the windows around, you see that it's synced to the other side. And if I minimize, maximize, change the state, everything is nicely synced with the other browser instances. So if you'd like to learn more about how this was built and how you can build something like this yourself, or if you're just wondering what this jiggly little fellow is down here in the corner, then stick around as we're gonna go through it all in this video. So once you've dropped me a like and sub and grab yourself a lovely cup of tea, let's get into it. Okay, so let's start off by logging out of this currently logged in computer. You'll notice we get a nice Windows sounds as well. Um, so first up we have uh, authentication, which is currently handled by Convex Auth. So I just chose Convex Auth because I didn't really need anything more complicated. I just wanted username and password. Plus this is Windows XP after all, you weren't expecting any sort of social login, were you? Uh, <laughs> anyway, I shall just log in one second. All right, we get that lovely welcoming Windows XP sound that you all know and love. And I'm just gonna close all these windows down here. Um, go away, LastPass. Close all these windows, go away, last, I don't know why it keeps coming up. Um, so we've got a nice blank slate. So let's firstly just talk about the aesthetics as that's the first thing you're probably gonna notice. Yes, Windows XP. Uh, I did start off by trying to do all this in CSS and styling myself but then I discovered somebody else has done all the hard work for me. So this project xp.css um, is excellent. It gives me like buttons and tabs and various bits and pieces that make it look much more authentic to the actual thing. And then to borrow, I borrowed some of the icons from this project. So this is another uh, project that uses the xp.css um, and has a bunch of the icons built into it. So I just borrowed some of the ones from there. Then on the code side, I just have a bunch of generic components that I like to use throughout my application. I like to abstract around the native um, components where I can, just because it lets me do a few extra niceties and also gives me like a single place to change in the future if I wanted to make changes. Um, apart from like some of the common things that this xp.css gives us like tabs and whatnot, um, I also have some layout stuff like box, flex, horizontal and vertical. And these are components, just simple components that I borrowed conceptually from Bazarat's general layout system, which is a pretty old library at this point, but I really like the way that it did a layout back in the day. So while we're looking at the code, let's just talk about the general code structure. So it's a React application you just saw, and it's also Vite, doesn't need anything fancy, doesn't need server-side rendering, so just a simple Vite application will do. And as this is Convex OS, uh, pretty much all of the state is stored in the Convex database. We'll go through that in a minute, but there is a few bits and pieces that you can't really store in the Convex database. So for example, if we have a look in this operating system uh, component here, we have things like the taskbar button refs. So this allows me to, uh, let me just show you actually, uh, minimize and grow the uh, the tasks when they're open, shrink them and they go, they minimize down to the location on the taskbar uh, appropriately. So uh, to do that, you need to have the location in the DOM where that is. So that's why some of these, um, not all the state is stored in the Convex database, but most of it is. I think the next logical place to look would be is what data I am storing in the database. So let's have a look in, at the schema. So we have our all tables from Convex Auth, which is pretty standard. Um, and then we also have uh, files table. So we have processes, windows, and Sheffy message metadata. Let's go through these one by one. So files, are pretty simple really. So we have uh, just a name for a file, a size, type, position, and an upload state. So upload state um, is a union of literal. So it's a discriminated union object. 
So an upload state can be created, uploading, uploaded, or error. I like to structure my state generally like this uh, as a kind of like a state machine. It makes things nice and clear and also means that we only have available the properties that are available in that state. So uh, when you're in the created state, for example, the storage ID doesn't exist. Otherwise, you would end up having a whole bunch of these nulls or undefined values and you just have to know in your head like, okay, that's available in this state but not available in that state. I like to do it this way where I know for sure that when it's in this state, I'm gonna have these uh, these variables av available. So uh, as you saw in the demo, uh, you can drag and drop files. So let me just drag a file onto the desktop if I let go and then you see it goes into the uploading state, we get this nice bar and then it's uploaded. So yeah, so you can obviously drag and drop and move the files around, but for some reason in, in Zen, the files aren't dragging properly, but if I open up in Chrome, they move correctly. And as you can see as well, obviously, because this is convex, everything is automatically synced. And when I open one up, again, you can see the window is nicely synced, which is nice. But for some reason in Zen, because it's based on Firefox, I'm not sure why it's not allowing me to drag and drop them. I could probably work that out, but anyway, let's move on. Next table we have is this processes table. So every app, I call them processes, has a row in here. So when you double click a preview, for example, it'll open up, you know, the image preview, video preview, text preview, or one of these other ones. And these are what hold the state for that process. So for example, what the image preview has a file that it is currently previewing. Uh, like text preview would have like another file, for example. Um, Internet Explorer has a URL history, history index, all that kind of thing. But that's not what you're seeing here. These are windows. So a process can have multiple windows. So we just hop back into the code. So this is the uh, third table we have here. So a windows table. So a window has a belongs to a process. You can have an X, Y position, width, height, title, an icon and a view state, and a view state being open, minimized, or maximized. It's pretty simple, really. Um, right now, no process has got multiple windows, but in theory, they could have them. Um, and the taskbar uh, shows the processes, and when you click to minimize or maximize, what it's gonna do is just gonna iterate through all the windows that belong to that process and minimize them or maximize them. And the final table is related to Sheffy. So I've not shown Sheffy yet. So that's who this little uh, jiggly character is down in the corner here. So this is Sheffy. So this is my homage to Windows's uh, Clippy. If you're familiar with the Clippy, if you're too young for that, Google it, you'll find out what I mean. It is a little character that we use from Convex Chef. So you can see him up in the corner here, if I just am big a little bit, you can see this little hat. So I borrowed that, chucked it through Nano Banana. And then before you know it, we've got Sheffy. <laughs> anyway, I, find, I think I'm hilarious. It is an agent, an AI agent. So you can say, hello. And then it responds, hi there. How's it going? What can I help you with today? Um, and uh, we have a menu bar up here, which lets us see the threads. So I can go back into other threads, I can delete threads, or I can create a new thread. And the same process, I can go file new thread, which should create a new one. And uh, one extra thing you can do about this is you can drag on a, an attachment. So I can say, please tell me about this picture. And I added these little attachments areas up here and you can click it to view the preview of what it was. Yeah, here's what I see, a close-up cheerful portrait of a person smiling at the camera. That's me, they're wearing a white dress shirt. Anyway, you get the picture, it works. But to be able to show these little chips up here, these little um, things up here, I had, to, I had to save that reference of what message it was and the files that were mentioned in there because unfortunately the convex um, agent component doesn't currently let us attach metadata to it. There's random bits of metadata to a message. So I had to save that in a separate table. Um, so that's what that is. And that's about the main features of the app really. So we also have this um, start menu, which you can open up the applications and you, you know you can drag in files into it. So you can open up the application without any current uh, state 
and then uh, you can view it on the GitHub or you can view the comics dashboard. Oh, and then the Internet Explorer browser as well. So this doesn't work amazingly well. Like the back and forward buttons don't really work. Home button works. Um, I think there's just a limited number of things you can do inside of a iframe. For example, my blog works fine, but if you were to go to convex.dev, you're going to get um, a security, a, a content security warning. So um, cause, here we go, refuse to connect if you look in Chrome as well. So it, it won't let you go to like every website, but some do like my blog, for example, it's uh, fine to, it to go to. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk about uh, today is this experimental way of organizing convex code that I have set up here. So I'm going to talk about more about my evolution of organizing convex code in a later video. But I just want to give you like a little sneak peek and maybe just get some feedback on it right now. So the idea is that convex code becomes a thin wrapper around a model. And the idea being that you can share that model in different places in your code base, because convex doesn't recommend that you or doesn't even allow you to call one query mutation action from another. So instead, you should use helper functions, which are just plain functions, and then use them within your other functions. So it's basically taking that idea and then putting a little bit more structure around it. So for example, if we look at this files uh, file here, so it's in the convex directory in the my directory. So that means that everything in here should be related to me, which is the user, which is why I'm using these custom functions. Oops, uh, let's find the definition down here. Um, so these my query, which is basically all it's doing is grabbing your auth and it's making sure that you are authenticated. And if you're not, it's going to throw an error and it provides a nice little helper to get the current user. So once we have the user, we know that this is a protected route, but then you'll notice that there's no database call in here to list the files for that user. Instead, what it's going to do is going to call into this files.foruser.list. And what this is, is it goes into the model.ts file in here. And in here, basically, this is the, the bulk of the code. So we have this for user, which is basically saying that this is basically scoping it to be everything within this is going to be the scope to this user with this user ID. And then it returns an object with another set of functions in. Uh, and one of them being list, which is actually going to do our database lookup given that user ID. But you can see this has got other kinds of ways of accessing files. So for example, this one's got uh, four files. So given the scope of this particular file, we can either find it, get it, which basically is a find, but checking that it's not null, or get it in a specific upload state. And if it's not in that upload state, then it'll throw an error. So what this basically allows me to do is to write these nice little helper functions that can be shared throughout the convex application um, without having to call into other queries and mutations directly. And structuring it in this kind of hierarchical way means I don't need to write functions like, um, uh, like find file with ID, and then it has to take in a database reader um, and then the ID of the file. Um, rather than doing that and doing it for every single one of these, I just have this kind of hierarchical structure which shortcuts it and provides a convention to which to follow. And I've done that throughout this application with this structure. So we can have a look at processes. It does the same. So processes for user starts a particular process or uh, centers it on screen or focuses it. And it just calls into this kind of model, which is then able to call call into each other. So uh, for this process, to be able to focus it, we have to call into the windows to get the windows for this process, list them, and then we iterate over them. And then for, the, for each individual window, we then call the focus on it. So again, I call these models because I think that makes sense, like programming wise. We're generating a model, a, a object that represents this and then we're calling functions on it. I probably should just go the whole hog and create classes. And then we're kind of like in the active object territory. Hmm. Food for thought anyway, uh, if you have any thoughts on this, leave me a comment down below. Alrighty, so that's about all I have for you for today. I did have grand ambitions to add many more features to this project, but unfortunately I ran out of time on this project. 
If you would like to pick up the mantle where I left off, then I've left a uh, link to the source and demo down below. What I really would have loved to have done is to fill out this OS just a little bit more, maybe add a clock, some other common XP apps like Minesweeper, Notepad, screensavers, that kind of thing. I would also have loved to add more tools to Sheffy to maybe do things like control the OS, read and manipulate files, maybe navigate the browser. But, ah well, that, that stuff will have to wait until next time. Speaking of next time, we're just about done here, but I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to drop me a like and sub. And if you want to check out a video a bit like this one, then you might want to check out this video I did a while back on Agent Inbox. It was kind of like a an agentic AI chat room where multiple agents can communicate with each other to collaborate on a task. It was a bunch of fun. You should check it out. Until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio.